Hi YouTube, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. So today we've got a video that I've been meaning to shoot for a while, but um, I just haven't. Okay, so um, I'm putting um, some box elder burl, uh, stabilized box elder burl scales on this Sab pattern uh, paring knife. Okay, now most of these paring knives right here, they have got... Uh, you know, I probably should have thought of this before I started the video, but I never do. Let's, let's grab, okay. So here's a blank, right? Now this is a banana pear blank. Okay, so the way these handles are constructed is uh, these little bitty pin or holes right here, these are eighth inch um, holes. So we're going to put eighth inch pins in here. These other little holes right here, they're about quarter inch. I mean, they, they don't really matter what size they are. Those are for uh, epoxy rivets, okay? So what'll happen is, is when you, uh, you know, epoxy the scales on, uh, these holes leave uh, a hole so that the epoxy can bond to one scale and then bond to the other scale through the, the, the knife blade or the, the tang. And it makes for a very strong um, uh, handle attachment method, okay? The pins, you know, I suppose since you do have the epoxy rivets built in there, the pins don't need to be peened, but this style of handle, I just like peening the pins, okay? So what you do is you make, and of course I don't have one handy that I already fit it. Anyway, so you make your scales, right? Okay, and I think I've shown this in another video somewhere. And then um, you go ahead and you, you epoxy up your, your scales, okay? And then you put test pins in through those holes, okay? And then usually when I'm doing this type of handle, I use um, uh, the Loctite, the Loctite five minute stuff. So you set a timer for five minutes, right? Okay, because that gives you the amount of time that um, you have until the epoxy sets up. Then, as soon as that timer goes off and you already have everything, you know, clamped together like this, you know, with the pins in, you set it off to the side, you hit the timer again immediately after it goes off for another five minutes. When that timer goes off again, that one, then what you do is you grab a pair of pliers, you grab a hold of the pins, and then you pull them out. That second <clears throat> that second five minutes is enough time for the epoxy to begin to set. It gets tacky, okay, um, and it will hold everything in place by itself. But you don't want those pins in there because you want to be able to pin them, right? Okay, so what you do is you go ahead and you pull those pins out. You let the handle finish setting up overnight or the next day, whatever. And then you go ahead and you grind your handle, you get it to about 80% finished, and then you insert your pins. And I have got a wasp that's uh, coming into the shop. That's like the fourth one so far this year. We've got a, a big winter snowstorm coming this, this evening. Um, I think it's 65 degrees right now. It's supposed to get down to like, I think nine tonight, something like that. So I think all the wasps are uh, um, looking for shelter. Um, where was I? So you get it to 80% finish, you go ahead and you re-drill through those holes, which is just kind of a cleanup type of deal. Then you put your pins in, and then you cut them to length and everything, and then you pin the, pin, the, the heads on both sides, and that makes a mechanical lock. Okay, so between the epoxy being a good epoxy, the epoxy rivets, and then the pinned heads on the pins, it, it's a really good, strong, simple, lightweight handle design. One thing that can happen, though, a problem with it, is that you forget to take the pins out, you know, before the epoxy is, before it's completely set up. So now, pretty much what you've got is these pins, they ain't going nowhere, okay? They are completely epoxied and locked in position. But the problem is you need to get them out so that you can put pinned pins back in there, right? Easiest way to do this... Okay, so this is the epoxy I used. You see how it's, I mean, it's completely set up and cured, right? The easiest way to do that is with a lighter, okay? Now this trick right here, um, I've used it, 
I mean, I've used it a couple of times here, but I've also used it in some other situations, and it usually works really great. So your pin material, in this case, my trial pins are made out of brass. It doesn't matter, brass, mild, stainless, um, nickel, silver, I guess, you know, pretty much anything. All you're trying to do is you're trying to heat that pin up until it breaks the epoxy bond in between the pin and the, the wood and your tang. Boom, comes right out. And you see the hole there? You can't really see it, it's got some epoxy left in there, but you ought to be able to see some light shining. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, oh, it's good my flashlight didn't go on. There you go. Okay, so, then we do the other one. Okay, so it's stuck, right? Take a lighter. Man, that, uh, I'm going to have to get rid of that wasp as soon as I'm done with this video. Heat it up. You know, I'm not, I'm honestly, I don't think that you can overheat it. Um, I mean, obviously, if you get it so hot that it burns the, uh, there it goes. Uh, if you get it so hot that it burns around the edges of your hole, that would be bad. Okay, um, if you do something like that, pretty much to get rid of that, what you'd have to do is um, get yourself like a tapered pin reamer. Okay, so I've got one. Uh, it's over in the toolbox over there, but it's an eighth inch tapered pin reamer. Okay, so it um, in the middle of it, it's an eighth inch thick. At the beginning, it's a little bit under an eighth inch thick, and at the uh, up near the handle, it's a little bit over an eighth inch thick. It, what it does is it cuts like a tapered hole like that. Okay, so then when you put your pin in, and it's got more space up here, so that when you pin it, it swells and locks it down inside the hole. In addition to pinning the head over, so it it makes a, a pretty strong lock also. But you'd have to use something like that to uh, to cut that that burned edge of that hole off so that then your your pin material has a place to swell and, and hide that. But anyway, so that's, um, like I said, I've, I've been meaning to, to show you guys that for an awful long time. I just never got around to it. Um, and this one, uh, you know, I normally do stuff in batches, but this one was a single one. So um, I honestly, I forgot to take the pins out. And then I thought, well, you know, I'm going to have to do that today because I need to go ahead and finish this handle off. And then I thought, well, heck, I'll go ahead and share that with y'all. Anyway, so uh, if you need to get those stuck pins out, grab yourself a lighter, heat up the pin, pull it out. As soon as that, that heat breaks out epoxy bond, works really slick. Anyway, this is Joe Calton with Calton Cutlery. You can find me on the web, caltoncutlery.com. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will see you next time.